Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, June 20th, 2014, 15. I'm speaking with Ms. Kamala Motihar Mansaramin Ramani. Uh, this interview is being conducted in New York. Uh, Ms. Motihar, um, what, what is your desh? When somebody asks your desh okay. or homeland? I know, uh, that's one of the questions in most of the forms also that uh, we need to fill up. And I always say undivided India. Great. And um, I was born in Sindh, okay. which is now in Pakistan. Okay. But in filling it up, mm -hmm. I always say Sindh, Undivided India. Send India, okay. Do you, were you born in, in any village or large town? Do you remember? It was a, a medium sized town for Me those days. What was the name? The, the name of the town is Sakkar. Sakkar, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, so, uh, how was the town like? I mean, do you remember? Uh, I do remember the town uh, quite well, actually. Uh, it was a small town. And there were, as far as I remember, there were three schools that mm -hmm. I remember. One was a boys' school, mm -hmm. and one was adjacent to that was a girls' school called PPCM Girls' School. PPCM. PPCM. Do you remember what? You said? know, I honestly don't okay. know PPCM, what it stood for. PPCM Girls' High School. Girls' school. Girls school. And that's the school I went to. Then there was yet one more school called Model School. Okay, so. So, how far was the school from where you lived? Um, about maybe 10 minutes walk, 10-12 minutes oh, so, walk. Oh, so you, did you walk to school? Yeah. And up to how, how many grades did you study there? Uh, I was in 6th standard. Six we used to have standards in those days. Yeah. So, 7th standard was the high school, okay. matriculation. It okay. was called matriculation. So, okay. I was in 6th standard okay. when uh, so, the partition happened. So, was Sak Sakkar a mixed town or was it predominantly Hindu, predominantly um, or mixed Hindu Muslim? Yeah, it mixed Hindu Muslim but the majority of population was Muslim. Muslim. All of Sindh, the majority population was Muslim. Okay. And what about your neighborhood? Was it? Uh, my neighborhood, I don't remember there okay. was even one single Muslim family. Yes. I think as it happens in most cases, the Muslims were uh, the working class people, Worker, right? the farmers, okay. the servants, okay. the, yeah. Worker, and okay. the uh, minority, Hindu minority, they were the rich people who okay. were actually employed. And also went to school. Now, now. Can you tell us a little bit about the house you lived in? How is it? It's small, big, small, brick, you know, a wooden. What kind of house was yeah. it? Yeah, I was, uh, the house was built and um, when my mother was expecting me during mm -hmm. that time. So mm -hmm. I was six months old when the family moved in there. Um, for uh, those days, it was a biggish house. Um, but the house was divided into two and half the house was rented out okay. and we lived in the other half okay. and it was two storied mm -hmm. uh, house. We had two rooms on top mm -hmm. and on the ground floor we had uh, a huge angan okay. in uh, those courtyard, days, uh, courtyard. Yeah. and then a big veranda, veranda. and with pillars I okay. remember very clearly. Okay. And uh, um, then there were two rooms. Mm -hmm. um, one was living, mm -hmm. dining, and one was the bedroom. Okay. Then, of course, the two. So, so the, your pa parents lived there for one generation, or they were there for many, many generations? They lived. No, they really had. They built the house on the. Yeah. So where did they yeah. move from? Did you know? From a town called Roiri, R O H R I, R -O -H -R -I R -O -H -R which was across the Indus River. Okay. And it was the two towns were connected by a bridge called Lansdowne Bridge. Oh, okay. And um, in, I believe Lansdowne Bridge was the first um, first bridge which didn't have any support in the middle. Oh, cantilever bridge. Cantilever bridge. Okay. So, but. In Rory, your family lived for many generations? Yes, they many did. 
Um, uh, my grandparents, I know, and the great grandparents mm -hmm. and all lived there, but okay. unfortunately, uh, they all seem to have an early death because I had, uh, when I was, uh, uh, my maternal grandparents died when my mother was a little girl and uh, my paternal grandfather mm -hmm. also passed away when my father was still quite young, small. Mm -hmm. But on, the only grandparent I remember is my paternal grandmother. Grandmother, okay. So what, was, what did your parents do? My father was a teacher. Okay. Um, in the in boys... The boys school? Yes. yes. And uh, mother? Um, the, uh, mother was a oh, housewife. So what is their names? My father's name was Gangaram Mancharamani, mm -hmm. and my mother's name was Dadan. Dadan. And right. she came from her maiden name was Gajwani. Gajwani. And they are um, the, the, the wealthy gentlemen farmers. Okay, in Sindh also. In Sindh. Is, is anybody still there in Sindh of your extended family? No. No. So <clears throat> now tell me. As you used to go to school, how was the school? Was it a mixed school? Was the was the uh, there were a lot of Muslim boy girls as, as just as Hindu boys Hindu girls? I, I'm sure there must have been some Muslim girls, but I just don't seem to remember no, any. But mostly, probably name. majority Hindu. Uh, yep, yeah, majority yeah. was Hindu. A principal was I remember her name Miss Narsian, okay. and she was um, educated in London. She is in Sydney. Uh, she was a Sindhi okay. and um, with that background of um, Western education, she was a very progressive person mm -hmm. and like all the other people like Mahatma Gandhi and mm -hmm. some of the other political mm -hmm. um, uh, activists, mm -hmm. uh, most of them have had uh, exposure to uh, close exposure yeah, to yeah. the Western society. They have been abroad, they have studied abroad. So Ms. Narsiana also had many progressive ideas, but she was really rooted in um, Indian culture. Okay. And I remember that even as, uh, in the school, we mm -hmm. used to have Gita classes. And, mm -hmm. uh, you um, took classes from there? Correct. So, we, had, uh, we were being taught Hindi and uh, we definitely, yeah. from that time, I still remember some of the Gita shlokas. Oh, I see. Now, I'm just pushing a little fast. So, what happened at the time of partition? At the time of partition, I was 12 years mm -hmm. old. And um, uh, my brother had joined RSS. Rashtriya Swam Seva Rashtriya Swam Seva It's a Hindu defense group. Correct. So, and, and um, his name was kind of blacklisted mm -hmm. because they were considered uh, political activists. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so because of that, and also at that time, Hemu Kalani was hanged. And... Uh, he was a Hindu? Uh, he was a Hindu. And uh, he was from Sakkar. And why was he hanged? Uh, because he was a political reactionary and okay. see, because uh, belonging to RSS at that so time. So it was the yeah. Muslim League which hanged him? Muslim League party or, or just people hanged him? Uh, the, the government. Oh, but, uh, the British the government. government. Yeah. Oh, I see. He okay. was officially sentenced oh, I see. to be executed. Okay. So, yeah. so, so because of that, I think my family was very apprehensive mm -hmm. about my brother being part of RSS. Mm -hmm. And we actually left exactly on August 15, 1947. How did you leave? We uh, left by train from Sakkar actually. We uh, took a train, went to Hyderabad. My father's mm -hmm. brother lived in Hyderabad. Hyderabad is the capital of of Sindh province. Uh, Hyderabad is one of the major yeah, cities, major city, yes. not quite uh, the capital, mm -hmm. but yeah, major cities. So we, we, my uncle was still there, though his wife and a lady left and gone to, um, gone across the border, mm -hmm. and so we stayed with my uncle for about a month. And, and so it's in party. Pakistan. Maybe. In Pakistan itself. Mm -hmm. And then after a month, all of us, my uncle and uh, mm -hmm. me, my brother, my mother, and my father, who had stayed back in Sakha, he came and joined us also, and we all left. And we left by train, 
And uh, at that time, the violence at the ladies started in Punjab. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, uh, you know, we were all apprehensive about mm -hmm. it. But I think we had a pretty smooth journey. Uh, no, through, through Punjab? Through, um, actually we came to the side of the border and we landed in um, Bikanil. Okay, so you crossed the Rajasthan border. Just how we okay. crossed so the Rajasthan yeah. border. So let's let's came to go through Punjab. Yeah. So there was no, we didn't encounter any kind of violence or anything, but yes, the theft was there. All our bags were stolen. Really? So when we reached uh, uh, reached Bikanil, uh, all of us had just what we were wearing. Oh my gosh. So, so how did they, they steal you? Just came and snatched you? The, uh, because the trains were overcrowded mm -hmm. and the luggage mm -hmm. was scattered in the car. Mm -hmm. You just, wherever it was, and there were a lot of people who were standing actually. So you had an obstructed view mm -hmm. of the your place luggage. where you had put your luggage. And, so, and there was nothing you could do if uh, in train was so the crowded. station. It was so what happened to your ancestral or your property? Um, ancestral property... Um, the property you lived in? Yeah, it took several years. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to fight for compensation. And after several years, we got like 0.05% of the value. Of the value. From the India the government? Of, government of India? India yes. uh, how did you settle then? Where, how did you live in, 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 in India? In, okay, we, the reason we went to Bikaner mm -hmm. because one of my um, father's cousin's son mm -hmm. had settled in Bikaner. Mm -hmm. He was manager of a glass factory yes. in Bikaner. And uh, because he was the only contact we had on the side of the border, okay. so we all gravitated to him. Mm -hmm. And then we um, rented an apartment. We stayed with him for a week or two weeks, mm -hmm. and then we rented an apartment. So we were in Bikane for about less than a year, maybe mm -hmm. about 10 months or so. And uh, my brother had actually, um, he was sent to uh, medical school in Anand, okay. but there were student riots there because the local students resented all the refugee students who had come oh, really? into college. So there was uh, Anand in Gujarat, right? Anand in no. Gujarat. So he came back mm. and he refused to. He came back to Bikaner. He refused to go back mm. to college, and um, then he and my father. Uh, traveled around in India uh, trying to look for opportunities because my brother wanted to start a business. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make a quick buck. Yeah. So they settled in, which my father was not in favor of because he had been a teacher. He was mm -hmm. a scholarly mm -hmm. person. He was known as an authority on Shakespeare mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. uh, living encyclopedia is what mm -hmm. people used to call him. And, um, but my brother insisted, so they ended up by buying a hosiery factory in Kanpur. Kanpur. So we, from Bikane, we moved to Kanpur. Mm -hmm. And we were there for eight years. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, they had started classes for refugee children. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, uh, I took, I studied at yeah. home actually. I took matriculation exam, mm -hmm. uh, so I cleared that in 1948, mm -hmm. and in um, then I uh, joined typing classes mm -hmm. because we all had to start mm -hmm. working, mm -hmm. and I was only back then um, like 13 and a half, mm -hmm. so I learned typing, mm -hmm. and I started working at the age of 14. Mm -hmm in government of India office called Directorate of Disposals. Okay, so you, you were, worked there? I worked yeah. there okay. for, uh, I would say for about six years I worked there. And I used to go to college in the morning um, from 7 to 10, 10 because we had special yeah, yeah. classes for refugee yeah. children. I worked from 10 to 5. And so, but did anybody go back to your, to your Sakkar? To Pakistan? No. Um, did you, during the time you were in Sakkar or your your uh, uncle's place, were there any violence or any any threats on you? No. No. 
So, but even during the train journey, it was safe. There was there was not much. We uh, did not face it. Face it. Yeah, yeah. But do you know if any of your Hindu neighbors stayed back in Pakistan? I um, I'm sure nobody really moved out as fast as we did. Okay. We probably were the first ones, but we really didn't have any okay. contact. Initially, yeah, yeah. we didn't have any contact. With what anyone. happened to your extended family? Were you how you were able to maintain contacts with them once you came to India? Were you able to your uncles and aunts? Were you able to contact have contact? See, the entire um, family had congregated in Bikaner. Okay. Because, because we had one one post there. Because we yeah. had one. Well, well, okay. So we were all together for that um, ten months or so that we were in Bikaner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All both my uncles and uh, my two aunts mm -hmm. and their families. They were all we were all together. So so if people call your home in India now, do you call Kanpur or do you call Anand or do you call what do you call your home? Well, you know, I'm often asked that question, where are you from? I said, and I always say it's a difficult question for me to answer because yeah. I, in each of the places, mm -hmm. I mean, in Sakhar, I, had, I was 12 years old. So, um, when people call home, what do you say? Um, my parents actually had moved to Bombay, mm -hmm. so basically, I well, really Bombay. think Bombay. Because that's Bombay. your parent, yeah. yeah, that's very common because that's yeah. when you go back. Sure. Um, so, um, do you know if anybody benefited because of partition of India? You mean from our family? No, 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 overall. Did Hindus, Muslims, or Sikhs, rich or poor? <clears throat> Sindhis and non Sindhis, anybody benefited because of partition of India? I certainly don't think so, though it moved in, uh, in general, people did not really move, they were not very mobile, they didn't move much from Sindh. Mm -hmm. uh, and that used to be one of my regrets as a child when I was growing up that we didn't travel, we didn't go places. And my only um, predominant part at the time we were moving was, oh, we are finally going <laughs> to some other place. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, you you did feel rootless. Okay, yeah. You just didn't uh, know uh, I have, I have you didn't belong. That. Yeah, uh, I have, my mother used to say that your root is cut, so you do not, yeah. Thanks. So <clears throat> I'm almost to the end. Um, is there anything else you want to say that I didn't ask you? Um, uh, no, not really. But uh, the only thing I would say is that a um, lot of responsibilities thrown on uh, people like, like my age, younger still. Mm -hmm. I had to take a lot of responsibility and maybe it matured me. It, um, it, all depends on some people may have gotten very frustrated mm -hmm. and it would have colored their outlook on life. Mm -hmm. I would say probably life has been either kind to me or else I'm a person who is easy, easily contented. Um, I'm ambitious enough but not over ambitious. Mm -hmm. So I have in, on the whole, I would have, I would say that uh, it's been, life has been an adventure. Okay. And uh, would I, you think that's true for your parents would say that too? No, my parents were really very shaken up because they really uh, came from a relatively wealthy class of people with a lot of property and you know that in sin they normally don't uh, keep any cash. Mm -hmm. Everything is in property, real mm -hmm. estate. Mm -hmm. We had farms, we had house in um, Saka, we mm -hmm. had a house in Rohiri mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course large farms which my mother had inherited mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. her parents. And all that was left behind and I think my mother always had regret right until the end, until the time she died. She would just keep on saying in her life, um, she has only seen unhappiness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.